Hey everybody, good morning. Well, afternoon actually. Uh, I spent the morning painting my daughter's room. So we're going to continue on with this uh, repair today. This is part two of the video. The first bit part was actually really long, so I um, hope you don't lose interest. Uh, it was like 27 minutes long. Anyhow, here we go. Um, we're going to continue working on the driver's side, get that side replaced today. I did manage to scavenge the uh, steering knuckle off the uh, silver Impala for the driver's side. You can see um, this is what's left of the lower control arm that uh, was damaged in the accident. Um, blo broke clean off. It, of course, the rust didn't help it, but it broke right at those rivets. Well, not at the rivets, right behind the rivets. And... Um, good shape uh, we just got to clean up a little of the corrosion and we'll um, once we get that done we will uh, start working on this uh, tie rod replacing the inner and outer tie rod here and then uh, we'll get the axle and um, the hub and, and all the rest of the assembly in here and get this buttoned up and then I think what I'm going to do since I didn't replace the uh, lower control arm on this side, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and drop uh, the lower control arm out of this side and replace it with the other brand new one I have. That way we'll have matching sides and everything will be even Steven and uh, it, it should be good to go. Um, so anyhow, thanks for tuning back in and we'll get the rest of this uh, done hopefully uh, this evening. If not, then we'll finish it up tomorrow. I still have to do an oil change on my wife's Impala. So uh, the work is never done. And um, thanks for hanging in here with me. I know this is uh, <laughs> quite the process. So anyhow, uh, hang tight, and I'll give you an update when we get things going here. All right, folks. Um, we got the new lower control arm in. It's not tightened up yet, and it's not going to be until I get everything else kind of in. Um, we got the tie rod in and secured and adjusted to the proper length next thing I'm gonna get the um, steering knuckle on this and uh, we'll go from there so the work continues talk to you in a minute okay progress update the drive shaft is in um, the uh, lower uh, control arm is attached at the ball joint that was a that was a thrill um, anyhow, we still have to tighten up the hardware on this. Oh, I also got the uh, sway bar bushing in, or sway bar link in. Why do I keep calling that a bushing? Well, I mean, there are bushings in there, but it's a link. So anyhow, got that back in. Uh, we're about to put the hub in. And um, we'll get this thing buttoned back up. I just got to find a brake pad that fell because the brake caliper slipped off the wires here. For some reason, my brake pad went flying. So I've got one. Figure how hard, how far could a brake pad fly? Anyhow, uh, just a, another quick update here, and I'm just I'm really I'm trying to get this done and out of here and um, doing that instead of, of videoing a lot of this but we'll, we'll give a good recap after it's over and uh, little progress notes along the way all right hang on we'll be back in a minute okay everybody another update that's uh seems like all i've been saying lately is another update anyhow uh let's take a look We've got the lower control arm in we got the bearing on um got the tie rod is is all buckled up the um sway bar link is uh is in place. Get this light out of here. Um, the uh, the strut is is back. Um, the ABS uh, sensor wire. Uh, some of the uh, hold downs broke when I was pulling it off. So we did a little double tie wrap trick there, where you use two tie wraps to stand it off. Until I can scavenge some. Uh, some of those things from a junkyard or Miami even go to Chevy and get them. Uh, anyhow, I think we'll uh, put the brakes back on and put the tires back on. Well, maybe not the tires just yet. Um, I'm going to clean the underside of this really good and then I'm going to do the trans uh, servicing. 
So we got a little bit to go, but uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is here. Um, everything is on and torqued to what uh, what they're supposed to be. Just uh, in case you're super curious, the axle nut is torqued 108 pounds uh, foot pounds per the manual. The um, the lower control arm fasteners are uh, 92 pounds. Thanks for hanging with me on this. Uh, it's been like three days of this already, so I know you're probably getting tired of hearing one more update. And um, we'll probably we'll be taking it out tomorrow for its test drive when I get home from work. So that'll be the last part of the video, and we'll see if uh, most of the bearing noise is gone. I still have the rears to do, which is going to... It's going to provide its own... Uh, brand of humor back there uh, trying to get those off but uh, the good part is is that there's no axles involved so once I get the bearing loose um, it should come off okay um, so hope and pray anyhow thanks for hanging in there uh, we'll talk to you soon uh, join me under the car watching some transmission fluid drain god that stuff is nasty anyhow as you can see over here the suspension over here is put back together. Um, I haven't done the lower control arm over here on this side. Uh, we're going to save that for another day. Uh, I'm going to test drive this thing first and um, and see how it drives with the bearings and all that. I, you know, like I said, I've got the I've got the control arm. I can just swap it out. Um, shouldn't be too big of a deal. But I wanted to get this transmission fluid changed. One is that I've had the transmission open, you know, replacing the axles, so um, I want to make sure there's a good filter in there. And two, the stuff, the, the fluid was just brown as all get out, um, which means it hasn't been changed in a while, if ever. Um, it's not black, so at least it's not burnt, but it is brown. Um, it's not pink. So we're going to drop the pan and replace the filter and add seven or seven and a half to eight quarts of uh, new dextron six um and um we'll see how that that does i did clean it up down here a little bit uh and it looks a lot better well, that way we can monitor any of the oil leaks um also uh I'll clean around the oil filter here when i change the oil there's um there's an oil leak up here uh, at the oil filter housing adapter gasket. I don't know if you can see it. It's, uh, well, it's way up there. Anyhow, yeah, it's all nasty and cruddy up there. And, and this is a, a common problem with these, um, ooh with these uh, Impalas, they, they leak uh, at the oil filter uh, adapter and they leak at the uh, oil pan at the front seal. Um, and then it, it kind of gets into the motor mount that's right there and the oil degrades the rubber and then you start having problems with that. And I can already see that this one, uh, the, the motor mount is still there, the rubber is still there, but you can tell I got the chunks of it flaking off from uh, the continual oil soakage. So anyhow, here I am under the car waiting for the pan to drain. And um, I think this is gonna be it for, for this video. We'll, uh, well, it won't be it for this, it'll be it for tonight. And uh, tomorrow I'll take you with me on the test drive and then we'll wrap the video up for that. But anyhow, uh, I wish this was, I, I wish I could have done more of a step-by-step -step on this, but man, this was just, what a project and this one curve right after the other but uh, at the end of the day it all got fixed and replaced thank god for the silver impala thank god for the parts that i had ordered for that impala because otherwise i'd be waiting on parts but um anyhow we'll go back to watching the fluid drain and uh i gotta drop that pan a little bit further but this is i hate doing these things they're such a mess Anyhow, thanks for uh, hanging with me through all this, and uh, we'll get the uh, end result tomorrow when we uh, take it for a test drive and don't hear the howling bearing noise. Or we may still hear it because the back bearings may be bad as well. And I've got those bearings, so that'll be next weekend. Anyhow, uh, as they say in Goon Squad, 
Peace. Hi everyone. Welcome back to my Copart Project Car Front Suspension Rebuild Part 2. Um, this is actually a couple days later. Um, I, I did some filming on, or I did some taping on Sunday. Well, I can't even say taping. I did some recording on Sunday and um, got quite a bit done. But then uh, as, as it's been happening with this car, it turned into a real goat rodeo. I think I'm going to patent that phrase, goat rodeo. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, we had the driver's side left to do, and I got it all buttoned back up, looked good, um, everything put back together, and then it was time to uh, do the trans filter, and that went really well, drained the uh, trans fluid out of it, and, and it was kind of nasty. You can kind of see it right here. That was, that was it. Um, and bolted the the pan back up you know correctly using the correct torque sequence and not you know warping the pan and crushing the gasket everything was going good i decided while i'm under here i'll drain the oil and pull the plug on the oil and it drained kind of slow because um of course the car was cold and hadn't been run and been up on jack stands for a couple days so uh I let it drain, and I had remembered that I left my uh, transmission fluid out in the car, out in the Suburban outside, so it was kind of cold, so I brought all eight quarts of it in the house and started warming it up in the sink uh, while I let the oil drain. So once it warmed up, I started putting it in, quart by quart by quart by quart, and about that time I figured, well, the oil's probably uh, done draining, so I'll go down and put the uh, drain plug in, and I crawl under the car, and lo and behold, transmission fluid is just pouring literally pouring out of the uh right side uh, or the passenger side uh, axle transmission seal so um talk about uh, kicking the teeth um after getting a catch pan under it and swearing and sobbing and begging and pleading for mercy i pulled it back apart and took a look at it and yeah the seal was a little nicked but I don't know whether I did that trying to pull the, the axle back out. Um, what I noticed about this, uh, this side was that um, it pulled back out without having to kind of force the snap ring. Um, and it also, when it was in there, it, it looked like I had a little bit too much shiny surface of the, you know, the bearing surface that rides in the seal. It looked like too much of that was showing, like the, the, the axle wasn't in far enough. But I figured, well, you know, this is a, a Detroit axle axle. And um, maybe they machined the the shoulder a little bit wider. I don't know. Um, because when I installed it, it looked like it sealed. It looked like it sealed just fine. And apparently it didn't. So I thought, well, you know what? I have a new seal. Um, I'll go grab it. Uh, I had a you know another seal over in the parts boxes there. And I pulled the old seal out. And I put the new seal in. And I could never get the axle to sit in there correctly. Um, I, I should say I should never get the, the new seal to sit in there correctly. Um, I didn't have the proper size socket to, to try and drive it, so I just kind of gave up. Um, at this time, it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, and I was pretty well defeated, so I gave up. And uh, the next day I gave up, and now it's the next day after that, which is Tuesday, and I'm back out here. So the plan for today is to investigate why this and this won't seal. Now this is the, the uh, seal that I tried to put in. And you can see the rubber's in good shape, but I kind of crushed the outside of it. So uh, we're not going to be using that one. I've got another seal from Duralast, and now I've got a two inch socket to use as a seal driver. But the big thing is, is why isn't this sealing here? Um, it looks like the seal's riding right about here, which I don't know that that's quite enough, you know, beef. And why isn't this going in? And it's actually, it's a gate, it's going in far enough to engage the spline, so it's not like I'm, I'm missing splines. Um, it almost seems like there's something in there blocking it from going in. So tonight, um, the goal is to get in there and see what's blocking it or see if there's anything in there preventing me from from um, inserting this as far as it needs to go 
the uh, ultimate backup plan since I know that this drive cup came out of the car and was not leaking and was, you know, not leaking transmission fluid and the seal was fine. Um, the backup plan is to disengage this from the rest of the drive axle, clean it out, take that end off of the new one, put some more axle grease in it, reband it, and use the old cup on the new axle. All the, all the parts except for, for this would be brand new, and I know that one actually fits. So hang on with me while I get under there and investigate why this isn't uh, going in uh, and sealing. Um, I'm going to take this time to also disassemble the rest of this side and uh, get that uh, lower control arm changed out like I wanted to. So we're going to take this as an opportunity instead of a um, instead of a disaster, and we'll get this sucker fixed up. But thanks for hanging in there. Um, I'm still promising that I'll take you on the test ride with me, and we'll uh, we'll hear the howling that's gone. So talk to you in a minute. Okay, folks, quick update. Uh, I've got everything pulled apart down here, and uh, I got the new seal, the new, new, new seal installed. I did a bunch of measurements, and um, there's absolutely no reason this axle shouldn't fit in here. Um, it has to be something with the, the retaining clip um, being a little bit too large or something, not allowing it to go in far enough. So um, I'm going to take care of that. And uh, let me give you a look at what we've got here. There's the new seal installed. And you can see inside there's really nothing. There's no, uh, there's no gear teeth damage or anything else like that. Um, the seal's in there straight. I mean, there should be no reason this shouldn't go in, so... What we're going to do is we're going to put the new lower control arm in. You can see it's right over here. And uh, we'll get that installed. We'll get everything else put back together. Um, slide the new axle in. And uh, add some transmission fluid and make sure it works. So anyhow, uh, I'll update you here in just a little bit. i got to get back to work. It's 7.35 and uh, the night's wasting. I don't want to be out here all night. All right, talk to you soon. Okay, guys, I know you're probably getting tired of all these updates, but I wanted to give you a little bit of progress here. We've got the axle installed. Yay, brand new. Hopefully not leaking. I haven't added transmission fluid yet, but we'll see. Anyhow, the, uh, the hub and the steering knuckle are back on. Um, the new lower control arm is in. Ball joint is tightened up. Still got to do the tie rod and button up all the rest of this stuff. Right now I've got to secure the ABS wire because, again, those little clips like to break off. So I'm going to do the double tie wrap thing. And we'll get this all uh, buttoned up and uh, torqued down and put back together. And then I guess I should add some transmission fluid before we go any further. But anyhow, I want you to know that uh, what the problem was was the retaining clip on the end of the uh, the splines of the uh, of the axle. Um, um, the one from Detroit Axle, they were a little, it was like spread out too much. So it wouldn't, it was blocking it from going back in the socket. So I squeezed them down a little bit, slid right in. We're good. New seal's in. Shouldn't be a problem. Keeping fingers crossed because you know how that goes. Anyhow, um, we'll get this buttoned up tonight and uh, it's sleeting and snowing out and it's not going to be a good night for a test drive. So we'll test drive it tomorrow during the daylight hours and uh, see how she does. Anyhow, thanks for hanging in there. I know this has been a long process, but we'll get there. Okay, folks, last update before the test drive. We are finished, well, other than putting the wheels on. Um, let's run this down while I kick the light all over the floor. This started as a simple bearing job, which turned into, well, I'll say it, a goat rodeo. And due to some uh, frozen fasteners and things not coming apart, um, axle stuck in bearing hubs and all the such, this car ended up with two new lower control arms, two new drive axles, two new inner tie rods, two new outer tie rods, um, two new sway bar links. 
Yeah, that's it. And two new bearing hubs, which was the original uh, project. So, um, you take a look here. You can see we're all back together. Everything is torqued up. We'll put a final torque on the uh, lower control arm uh, and the um, sway bar link uh, stuff, uh, bolts, when, um, when we get it on the ground bearing its own weight. Uh, it's always best to really do a final torque on your suspension when uh, when you have the weight bearing on the suspension. Um, but other than that, no lip, no leaks, no drips. Um, I put a quart and a half of transmission uh, fluid back in the transmission because that's about what it leaks when you pull that axle out. So that's what I put back in. We'll start there. So the dry or the passenger side is complete and the driver's side is the same thing over here is complete new drive axle new tie rods inner and outer new sway bar link new axles new bearing hubs and you can see there the lower control arm hardware um to say this has been challenging would be an understatement um it didn't start out being real difficult. Like I said, it's just the, the frozen fasteners make it uh, kind of difficult um, and, and made the mission creep. Um, could I have gone another route and not put all these new parts on the car? Yeah, sure. Um, I could have taken it someplace and had the, the axles pressed out. Obviously, time ended up not being um, kind of kind of the thing because here it is Tuesday. I could have had them at a machine shop yesterday or today. But uh, I had the parts here. Um, it wasn't that much money being put into it. Really, with the, the suspension kit was 100 bucks um, from Detroit Axle all day long. I, I, I'm going to order another one for the silver car. Uh, the drive axles were about $83 combined, again, from Detroit Axle. So um, really, I, I'm out about 180 bucks um but i'm not really out it it's invested in the car the car now has a totally new front end other than the struts and like i said the struts are the struts ride well they, they actually look like they may have been replaced i don't think they're oem um the rubber on the boots looks like they're in really good shape um they're rusty of course but you know like i said new york ohio michigan um this car has lived in the rust belt its entire life. So that being said, um, the next thing is to throw the tires on it, get it off the jack stand, and um, take it out for a test drive. We're not going to do that tonight. It's late. It's freezing rain out uh, on top of the freezing rain and sleet we got earlier in the day. So uh, it's not fit for man or beast out there. So we're going we're gonna to hold off till we get a little bit better conditions. But I'll be sure to take you along for the ride. Uh, we still have the rear bearings to do, which are going to present its own problems. Uh, the only really good part is that there's not axle shafts for the, the bearings to be frozen on. But they can get frozen in the, in the knuckles back there. Um, and um, uh, let's hope not. Let's, let's just hope not. Um, we've already been back there working on the suspension a little bit earlier, so, uh, on the driver's side. So, uh, at least that's been a part recently. Anyhow, thanks for hanging in there. You guys have been troopers. I really appreciate it. I know this is, uh, this has kind of been an adventure and hopefully I can edit it down to something uh, reasonably coherent, uh, to give you an idea of what has gone on here over the past couple days. Um, it's, it's been a challenge let's just put it that way but like i said it's it's a great sense of accomplishment when you get this done um i'm not a asc certified auto mechanic uh, i'm i'm a backyard mechanic i'm a, I'm a do-it-yourselfer um i'm a trained and licensed aircraft mechanic although i haven't done that in 30 years yeah, 30 years yeah 30 years um but the skills I learned and the knowledge I learned are still all lurking in there some way, somewhere. And uh, although it doesn't, a lot of it doesn't transfer, air, aircraft are a lot more persnickety as about the way, you know, maintenance is done. And I think we all know that. But just the mechanical sense, 
the inspection, the looking at things, the knowing how things come apart, knowing what's good, what's bad, what's too tight, what's too loose, you know, uh, knowing how to read the manual and get the torque specs out of the manual. Um, that's one thing I made sure that I did uh, with this is I, I have the, the Haynes manual and I looked up the torque specs on all of this and, and torqued it to specs. Um, and we'll recheck the torque with it sitting on the ground. Um, because if I sell this car, somebody else is going to be driving it and it's their butt in the seat and I don't want to be, you know, half ass in it with, when somebody else's uh, butt's in the seat. So everything got done to, to spec, nothing, no, no corners were cut. That's why we were, you know, replacing parts instead of, you know, trying to jury rig them. Um, I was lucky to have a donor car sitting right outside that I could scavenge those uh, steering knuckles off of. So we're going to still have to replace those at some point. I'll either get these freed up or I'll go to the junkyard and um, see if I can find some that aren't quite as uh, encumbered. So anyhow, hang in there. Next day or so, we'll do a test drive and wrap this uh, this uh, series up. And then we'll move on to the rear suspension and we'll keep going on this project car till it's done. Hang in there. Thanks.